your source for everything paranormal, Para-X. The views expressed and the opinions given by the individual host and their guests do not necessarily reflect those of Para-X, its affiliates, or its sponsors. Welcome. Another beautiful Wednesday night. It's going to cloud up and rain, but it's beautiful Wednesday. And uh, gosh, it's the calling. Yay. Um, woo. So, woo. <laughs> uh, Kimberly Juarez, how you doing? Hey, Jerry. How are you? I'm doing great. How about you? Good. I'm doing good, too. Well, good. How about you? <laughs> <laughs> and... Willow Le Marchand, how are you? I'm doing great. How are you? <laughs> I think we heard that somewhere before. <laughs> so now, are you guys getting a lot of the weather still, or is it kind of broke a little bit? Because you're um, in New Orleans. Right now, it's been dry. We we get thunder, but then nothing happens. <laughs> it's like they're teasing us. Oh, you're going to have flood warning. And then there's no rain. I'm like, okay. So it doesn't look like we have rain throughout the weekend. So that's good. Wow. I'll be darned. Well, oh, and um, Kimberly, so this weekend you got the big squatcher thing going on. Yeah, we are going out finally. Excellent. I'm so excited. Super excited. So that, I would be too. Yeah. You know, land of mosquito bites. Um, oh gosh, don't snakes, remind me. Snakes, all that ticks. fun stuff. No, it's ticks. It's ticks. <laughs> no, I said snakes. Oh no, ticks. <laughs> I haven't seen a snake actually. I've not seen a snake out there. So, well, knock on wood somewhere. Somewhere. I okay, I'll do it for you. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. Yeah. Well, good. That's going to be fun. That'll be fun to get on out there and yeah. have some fun. Are you going any place special, uh, Willow? Well, not yet. I do have something coming up in November, which I'm excited about. I have a friend coming in, Nola Nash. She's an author. Um, she's coming in from Nashville area, and we're going to do an investigation in the Lafitte Guest House. Wow. That's yeah. exciting. Nice. Yeah. And then we're going to go to the Andre Plantation, which was back in the 1800s. Um, gosh, was it 1811, I want to say? There was a slave uprising, and this is where it originated, was at the Andre Plantation. Oh. Wow. Nice. So well, I'm we... going to investigate that, too. Nice, nice. Nice. Well, Sim, my team, Supernatural Investigators of Minnesota, we uh, were to do a investigated or investigation clearing that was four hours away. So we drove, we got everything. We went out there and she wasn't there. Oh. We waited around for hours and it just didn't happen. So we, we drove all the way back and it's like, you know, the scenery was pretty good. You know, I found a, a coffee shop called Owly, Owly Coffee. How far was it, Jerry, again? Five hours, you said? Four hours. It was in, uh, uh, I'm going to, you know, I'm not good with words. Yeah. um, (laughs) Or naming stuff. It was in Ogama. Ogama. Yeah. Ogama, Minnesota. Yeah. Over by uh, Paracon. Yeah. 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 By Monoman. Yeah. So it was exciting anyway. Um, Okay. So. Our guest tonight is one of my favorite of all people that we've ever had on the show. Uh, we've gotten to be buddies. She's awesome. Uh, if I've got a 
if I, even if I got a problem or something like that, I always give her a call and she always tells me, pull up your big boy pants and get back in the fight, you know, type of thing. And that's my buddy, Valentina Lomborg Wiley. How you doing, honey? Hey, good to see you. Like, like, you literally. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's funny when we called, um, first called up Valentina, she's like, uh, well, I'm kind of cooking at the same time. So, and everything she showed us, it looked absolutely beautiful, some kind of a flatbed uh, bread thing. And then she says, oh, and goat cheese. And I thought, okay, that's it. You lost me. <laughs> I just can't do the goat cheese, it's but it looked really good. For sure. But it's in little tiny dollars. I know, right. but you know. <laughs> That's the thing. You know, that's one thing about uh, cheese when it comes to even on a pizza. I can't I don't know exactly what kind of cheese it is, but they put little dollops of it around. I can't eat it. It's the texture. I think it has to be not like Velveeta, but <laughs> it's got to have a, a better type of thing. <laughs> I know I'm weird. I should just shut up. Better type of You're already affected by the cheese. I am. It is. <laughs> <laughs> it did something to me, Valentina. It did something. Okay. But she's so, got a lot of good veggies on there, though. I did oh, see that. She Very has some exotic. really good stuff on there. Um, yep. And it's actually ready. The nice thing with the flatbread, it only like literally took about seven minutes to cook. So it's already ready. Um, wow. Pretty much everything I eat comes in a bowl and you use a spoon. <laughs> cereal? No. no. <laughs> I was joking kind of on that one. <laughs> um, so, okay. So, Valentina, you are a woman of many hats. You yeah. have done some acting, um, yes. a lot of different shows. You had your own show for a while. Um, yes. You had, uh, you're a model, and you can tell that when they see you, when, you know, anybody sees you, they're like, oh, my God, she used to be a model, or she's a model, I bet <laughs> you are. Um, you're also a psychic Reiki master, and um, my gosh, you've done wait, so Wait, wait, I'm not, I have to correct you, I'm not a Reiki master. Oh, I'm I was getting you... ready to be certified in Reiki um, next week, but just level one. So it's the beginning of the journey. Gotcha. Well, you know, it's funny is that I remember the first reading I had with you, you were completely spot on. And it was actually kind of scary in a way. Yes, you know? I didn't know you really at all. <laughs> <laughs> What's that? Because I didn't even know you. I know you didn't know me that well at all. So. Wow, you know, that's awesome. That it was awesome. It was the, the best reading I've ever had. So well, well, I appreciate well, that. <laughs> <Thanks>. <laughs> so you know, I'm kind of curious. You know, we got a a wide variety of, of things we're gonna talk about. One thing is I you know, a lot of people have asked me, um, what about animals? Are there's some people believe well, I used to work for a veterinarian that believed that animals don't feel pain. So I quit. You know, after one surgery setting in, I was done with it. But right. some people say they don't have souls. Your thoughts? That is the, that is like the weirdest thing. I would, um, I'm the bigger screen here. That is like the weirdest, that is thing. Like the weirdest thing. Oh, you're echoing there. Stop the Hang on, bear with me. Okay. I stopped the other call. Sorry, I decided to go on an iPad so I could see you guys bigger. You were tiny little dots. Okay. Um, well, everything has a soul. I even think plants have souls. Like, really. Um, even though it's not like a feeling, you know, like the plant is going to fall in love with you. But I, I do feel that that they're able to sense on vibration more as, as you know, um, feeling wise. So I think plants have souls, animals have souls, we have souls. I would even go as far as to say that a rock had some sort of soul or some, you know, maybe it's not as expressive, but I think that there, there's something there. The rock would take offense if it got moved from its home. You know, we may not be able to know about, but I mean, you know what I'm saying? Um, it's right. Like, is it a soul in a sense that when it dies, it goes back up and comes back down? No, a rock probably won't. A plant, eh, 
it might regenerate because again, if it dies, there's a seed that, that kind of comes from it and it starts over. Uh, but people and animals definitely have souls. Um, as do most things, it's just various levels of them. Some have souls with emotion and some have souls that actually will be regenerating. Does that make sense? Yes. Right. I'm going to ask one more question before I turn it over to Kimberly. Sorry, Kimberly. Yes. Um, people, can a person see their own soul? What's your thoughts on that? You there? Can you hear me okay? Valentina, what I, yeah. I said, well, I'll repeat it again. I can um, hear you. Oh, okay. So what do you think about people being able to see their own souls? Oh, I didn't know the question was for me. Sorry. Yes. Oh, yes, uh, it was. That's why you're giving me that strange look. I know. I'm like, you said Kimberly. I'm like, Kimberly fell asleep now. <laughs> oh, no. Kimberly <laughs> gets her questions next. <laughs> Um, well, that's okay. You know, my answers are always so lengthy because they're a little introspective. Um, I think when other people die, we can see their souls. But then I know that when I do what I do and I read people, I can see their souls, you know, not necessarily visually like Superman, but I can see into their soul and, and that's how I read people. So... To answer your question in a roundabout way, I think we can see it energetically. However, if you were to ask me what a soul look like, um, I don't think like a heart or a lung, I don't think we can see it in that aspect. Right. So yes and no. <laughs> yes and no. Okay. Gotcha. Kimberly? Kimberly? You got to unmute your. Yeah, I'm oh, sorry. I try to. I don't want. Yeah, I don't want to have other sounds coming through. I'm sorry about that. How about UFOs, Valentina? What do you think about other aliens? What are your oh. thoughts on that? And how many do you think that there's? You know, like a lot of species of that type. Yes, I've had actually now one, two three alien encounters the first started in approximately i think it was 1981 it's actually listed in the national ufo registry of sightings um wow. it was in alaska uh which is a great place for them to go because they seem to go up there where there's a lot of space in russia and alaska where i lived at the tip was very close to russia right. and um the weird thing was was that my dad worked for the police station and one day he got a phone call that there was a ufo sighted and um, there were some tourists staying on the beach. And where I lived, it was so cold that the Arctic Ocean would freeze solid. Mm -hmm. And so they had third degree burns on their face um, off of, um, you know, the UFO apparently was shining on the ice. And then they uh -huh. looked burn their face. Well, so when my dad got the call, I said, hey, can I come along? So we came along. I came along in the car. And as we're driving to where it was sighted, I see a red sliver go slowly across the ocean. And then it just went, Pew! and it disappeared. No sound. And I was like, holy cow, I saw my first UFO. Wow. And then, um, and they made a believer out of me. I mean, there's no, I mean, I live in the tip mm -hmm. top of Alaska. There's absolutely not, no aircraft. There's one maybe a week, you know. Mm -hmm. And um then there was another time I was in Santa Cruz and this light over the ocean, again over the ocean, followed me and I looked and it stopped and then I walked and it went and then I saw, and we went back and forth like that. And I'm like, something is following me. Mm -hmm. And then the last time was um, when I moved here in 2015, I saw one across the bay and that one I waved to and right, right as I waved, it, it went really bright and then it, it went across the bay. So wow. after all those encounters, I'm a firm believer that there's definitely something else here. Um, mm -hmm. I think they come down to keep track of us, kind of, and monitor us. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Interesting. Kimberly, you got more? Well, then do you think that maybe there's just, like, more than just a group of them? Like, you know how they call them the greys? And yeah. the, what are your thoughts of that? I mean, do you think they have different species of some of types? Absolutely. And I had one of my um, my actual 
little bit like a mentor that that um, mm -hmm. he's also got gifts. And he told me that he tuned into me um, a couple of days ago remotely. And he says, I believe you're from the Arcturian race of aliens. And I was like, oh, well, that explains everything. <laughs> um, <laughs> You know, so I had to start doing some research on that and see what that's about. But that would make sense why maybe they are coming down to check. I mean, they probably check on everyone, but, you know, right. if they're checking on one of their people, mm -hmm. um, because I, I just feel like I'm being watched sometimes. And I haven't right. seen any raise any, I haven't had any encounters other than from a long distance. But um, now I want to start reading up on the Arcturian race because if those are my people, you know, I need a T-shirt. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Willow, go ahead. So being on that topic of, of aliens, extraterrestrials, do you think, Valentina, that we as spiritual people – can almost attract them to us because they are looking for us to be more evolved as a species before they're going to actually give us more interaction? Absolutely. We are so far behind. I mean, technology is doing pretty well, but us as a whole, you know, the lessons and just we're, we're so primitive that they can't help but just kind of check up on us and maybe... I don't think they, they're allowed much to interfere. So I think they just check up. And I can only, I can only imagine their frustration. But I think for us that are involving, of, of evolving, you know, some people here are evolving quicker than others, some not at all. Um, mm -hmm. For those that are yeah. vibrating higher, um, whether it's, it's the atmosphere or the moon or the retrograde or whatever, for those that are getting up there, the communion is a lot closer. It's a lot more... Um, um, It'll be more recent, you know, there'll be more um, up to date activity and, and, and kind of communion, you know, communion, communing, <laughs> communing <laughs> with them. Um, so I, I think there's different levels. Other people walk around unnoticed that anything's even going on. But I think for those yeah. that vibrate to that level, absolutely, there's there's more friendship and, and kinship going on. Mm hmm. Yeah, um, I've been watching Dr. Stephen Greer, and he's using the uh, his CE5 protocols where people go into meditation to Ooh. actually attract them, to interact yeah. with them, oh. and they'll see orbs in the sky. And it's very interesting. I'm really kind of watching to see what evolves from that. Oh, cool. I'll have to check that out, too. Yeah. Yeah. So now... Um, Speaking of aliens, since we're talking about it, um, when it comes to um, certain things such as, um, you know, this is my favorite thing to say. Everybody's going to go, oh, there goes Jerry again. But the, the um, you know, uh, they say this is our government, which really doesn't believe in anything. But now you're originally from Denmark, correct? Yes. 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 Now, over there, it's pretty much open, isn't it, where they, the government talks freely about UFOs? Am I um, correct on that? Don't quote me on it. I'm not sure because, um, like, I really haven't looked into that part of my, <laughs> my, my country background. But, I mean, we're open about everything, you know, sexuality. Um, well, this ain't the right <laughs> show for that. Oh, my God. <laughs> No, but I mean, we're just very open about everything, you know, it's a, it's a socialist country. And so, so a lot of stuff is, is just, um, nothing is hidden, but I don't right. know for a fact, you know, I mean, I'm sure that there's just like there's paranormal groups. I'm sure there's, there's alien groups over there, but, um, I'd imagine so. Right. Right. Interesting. So would you say that, uh, um, you know, on some of the ones that you've seen and everything that they possibly could be unmanned and just oh, be like drone yeah. types? Yeah, I mean, I never saw, I mean, they were so far away, that bright red light in Alaska, there was no way to see what was in there. Um, however, the one I filmed and, and interacted with in 2015 it must have been intelligent because I said, I said kind of telepathically. First, I said in my head, do you see me? And then I said out loud, do you see me? And it react. And then I waved and it reacted. So one would think somebody was in there. 
for it to actually react because the reaction was right away. I was like, oh my God. You know, if that was a plane or a pilot, it wouldn't have, you know, it, it grew brighter. And when I stopped the video frame by frame to look, it, it changed shapes and colors. And I actually checked them against like a UFO shaped guide. And I was like, oh my God, it, it's like doing these different things. So again, I mean, life-changing experiences that really humble you and make you think more about the bigger picture than all the crap going on down here. Right, right. Uh, Kimberly? So what do you think about, Valentina, then what do you think about abduction? Why do they, why do people think that, why humans are abducted by these aliens? What would, what is your thought on that? My theory is that it's almost for entertainment because people get abducted, they get probed and worked on or whatever, and then they get put back down because I think Again, you think with that advancement that they wouldn't need to do bother right, right. little people like us, but it is that that little people like us um, situation that makes them want to to look because we are so simple. It's fascinating, whereas we find them fascinating because they're so complex. So in mm-hmm. this case, it's reversed because it is so simplistic. We've got organs, we've got reproduction things, we've right. got heart. You know, it's things that they, um, pretty, we got more fingers, more, more than likely, who knows. Right, um, right. So it's their fascination with us that, that makes them come and work, check on us, and, and, and take us up for a bit, do an examination, pop us back mm-hmm. down. You know, you've heard many stories of that. And oh, I think yeah. For the fact of curiosity, because if they really were into abduction, I mean, it, it's, I wouldn't call it an alien abduction. It's more like an alien borrowing. <laughs> because... <Right. laughs> They bring you back. <laughs> That's I agree with that. I I agree. Kimberly. Um. Well, that's because I've I've had an experience, so I'm just wondering, and it just seems like that's exactly what I I felt about it. So I felt like it was just something that they were curious, you know, and you know, fascinated by who, who we are because. I don't know. I think we're way better looking. If you and they probably think we're the ugliest. I'm just saying. You know. More hair, More hair. <laughs> right? Right. So I don't know. They, you know, or I probably was rejected at one point where they were like, "Oh, we don't want that." <laughs> you know. No. I think so it was your saying. husband. I think it was your husband, Kimberly. <laughs> so just saying, you know. We have to bring her back. <laughs> oh, Go ahead, Will- Willow. <laughs> now I lost my train of thought. That was too cute. <laughs> um, but uh, here's here, okay. So now I'm thinking. Okay, what was it? Um, so with the abductions, do you think that possibly, and not even just the abductions, but them visiting us in general? What is your opinion about them possibly being us from the future? And time traveling, coming back here to try to fix us before we screw up our future. Oh, good That's question. A, yeah, that is a good one. Um, oh, time traveler. That's a whole different show. <laughs> no. um, <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't really. Some things I, I think about, and then other things I just kind of accept. And there is that strong possibility. I mean, because the time continuum is, it's not noted, and and five minutes is five years. It's all the same up there. Sure, they could be coming back, but I think they would have to be working a lot harder. But who knows? Maybe they're working with Trump and everyone else <laughs> to try to do <laughs> maybe all of this, you know, Elon Musk. Maybe they're already working with, with some people down here to to try to correct some of the stuff that's going on. Okay. Exactly. Yep. Yeah, I, I got that one. Um, OK, let's switch it up a little bit. we got six minutes before uh, break. Um, when it comes to one of the places that you've investigated quite a bit, uh, the Queen Mary, Ooh. and every time I know <laughs> she just went Ooh, a big Ooh. smile. <laughs> I know that um, when it comes to um, 
investigating and and history about it you're definitely the one to talk to about it what what is you know like your first time there did it just kind of like latch your heart and just didn't let go yeah, I mean, the first time was 2010 um, for a paranormal convention. And, and I really, it was one of those things, I've lived in L.A. 21 years, and I, I always drive by, and I'm like, man, this will be a way that I kill two birds with one stone. I'll get to go to the paranormal convention, and I'll finally get to go to the Queen Mary. So really, it, it, it was more about the paranormal convention than the Queen Mary. But once I got there and um, I broke off into the room and the stuff that happened, I mean, the Queen must have rolled out the red carpet between the knocks on the wall that answered back to me, it changing the temperature on demand, um, and then the full body apparition I saw walking down in 1930s outfit, um, down the hallway, I was like, okay, I'm sold. I need to know what's going on with this place. And it, it just, it's so nostalgic. And I've really drawn close to the 1940s. I listened to that kind of music. Um, it just, just something about it makes you not want to leave. And um, I just felt right at home. And I know I connect to various buildings and, and I'm very um, connected to buildings and houses and various architecture but something there just took my heart and and grabbed on it and that was it and and ever since then i just got addicted to going there i mean i, I probably went 10 visits a, a year that i stayed on the boat on the ship um and it just became like oh it's my birthday let's go to the ship oh it's tea time <laughs> let's go to the ship it's fourth of july let's go to the ship every excuse to go you know it was just and i've been part of the the meeting of the queens which was like 30 years when the other queen mary queen two that's actually functioning pulled up alongside and they did a, gr a greeting back and forth and did their horns and i was bawling my eyes out and i'm like oh my god this is just like for a moment i pretended i was there and it was functioning and the two ships were meeting in the ocean it was it was just so emotional it was beautiful and, and really neat to be part of that. And so I've been part of a lot of um, other things that they've had. I've had the Christmas buffet luncheon, and I, I pretty much have tried every little function thing there. And I, I think I've been in like 15 or 20 rooms. I keep track of how many rooms. I get a new room each time. Mm -hmm. So it, it's it's like the love for that, for that ship is undeniable. I need to pull that sh ship over here to Florida so it could be docked and I can go back to going on. <laughs> <laughs> I need it here. <laughs> What's the, the the weirdest thing that ever happened on that ship? Gosh. You know, um, it doesn't disappoint. I mean, it has, um, one time I got my covers pulled off and I was able to reach because I always keep all my equipment, my phone, my my. Uh, recorder everything is right there so I reached very slowly because I felt whatever was pulling the covers off was still there so I hurried and took a picture from above and you can see hand marks on the cover um, I've, I've interacted with the little girl down in the pool that drowned and one day I bought a doll I brought a doll and um, on the recording you can hear it say let's grab her and when I played it back first I was like oh my god they're trying to grab me and then I didn't realize they were trying, they were talking about the doll, oh. you know, and I was like, oh my God, it was real live interaction, real time. She, she, she was there and she saw the doll and she wow. wanted to the doll, but the recording says, let's grab her like that. And I was like, whoa. So, um, from things in my room to the pool, to the hallway. And then of course the famous pictures that I shot of the ghost in the hallway that was featured around the world. Um, I just, it never disappoints. I mean, it, it is such an exciting place to go. Only a couple of times have, have things not happened because I brought other people <laughs> and the ghosts tend to shy away when I'm not by myself. Oh, the, I've heard that that actually happens to a lot of people. Mm -hmm. um, wow. Uh, Kimberly? So do you think there was more than just one child then? Because they're saying, let's grab her. So my understanding is that the little six-year-old girl that drowned when she slipped into the pool is being oh. protected by her nanny. Even though she's oh. running around looking for her parents, that's why she's stuck there. The nanny seems to be a meaner apparition that keeps her there. But she does run around the rest of the ship. But she's still searching for her parents. 
But I think she's gotten used to me. That's why she interacts with me, as have most of the ghosts. I also talked with John that died Mm -hmm. at um, door 13. He will knock and and will interact. Um, Sometimes it touch my hair. (laughs) It's a good thing I don't freak out. (laughs) I would, because I use too much hairspray. (laughs) (laughs) Well, listen, guys, we need to take break. I'm sorry to do that to you in the middle of a sentence. Uh, We're going to take break, and we'll be back in about two minutes. Your source for everything paranormal. Parasurks. You've no doubt heard of Tango and Cash, Whiskey Tango Foxtrot. Perhaps it takes two to tango. Well, now, on the first and third Thursdays of each month, there's a show called Tango and Friends at 8 p.m. Eastern on the Para-X Radio Network with your host, Bruce Tango. And yes, there will be at least two to tango on each episode, sometimes even more. There's going to be lots of topics and lots of guests you'll all know and lots of surprises. Prizes. Tango and Friends, every first and third Thursday of the month at 8 p.m. right here on the Para-X Radio Network. Those geek ladies charmed and Victoria from exploring the paranormal with Geeks Paranormal are at it again with another amazing season full of paranormal celebrity interviews with amazing guests and stories of haunted locations and so much more. You will hear it first on Para-X. Tune in Wednesday nights, 8 p.m. Central. You will not be disappointed. This is Jerry with the calling, and of course, as usual, tomorrow, this show will be posted on thecallingradioshow.com, and not just there, but also on our YouTube channel by the name of, get a load of this, okay, hold on, The Calling Radio Show. Yes, they're both the <laughs> same thing, only a lot different, but if you go to the YouTube, if you could, just kind of hit that little subscribe button and the little ding notify button and then we will it is it'll notify you when new shows are put on um also to para x darn they got some good shows on here every tuesday they have the gathering stephanie and heidi sit around uh the no they just don't sit around the metaphysical table and uh if you've never heard their show on a tuesday night uh 8 p.m central standard time or 9 p.m um eastern standard time check them out it's really good they do a great job and right after this show don't leave because you have geeks paranormal those ladies are fine they do a great job so yeah tons to do stick with para x you guys okay so kimberly you let's go or no we're gonna go with willow right yep yeah so I did have a question since we're still about talking about the Queen Mary, which I'd love to go someday. That's one of my bucket lists. Um, but do you also use psychometry? Do you, if you touch, touch the ship, do you see things? Do you feel things when you're there? Yes. Um, I do use psychometry on a regular basis anyway for my readings at home. But the first thing I do when I pull up and drive really fast and hurry to park, um, (laughs) I touch the ship and I'm just like, and I I can feel them saying she's here. And, and it's just like, Oh my God, it's just like, I'm home. Um, You know, it's, it's just like Jack Nicholson in the shining, you know, it's like (laughs) home. Um, And then I just, um, yeah, I mean, I do touch a lot of the ship. Um, it has a, a some of the each room is different. First of all, every room is unique. That's why I, I right. try to get a different 
bedroom each time. Some of them actually have the original bathtub, which has a choice of salt water or fresh water. Um, mind you, I don't think the salt water one works. But just touching all the knobs, most of the places have the original fixtures. They're, they're pinned down because a lot of stuff has been stolen, unfortunately. Um, and um, just just to, to touch, and even walking down the hallways of the beautiful shiny wood, I touch that. I just, um, I haven't, I just touch it to connect. I haven't, to answer your question, I haven't touched it. I'm like, okay, let's see what comes from this. Um, last, I think two months ago, a friend of mine saw some Queen Mary spoons for sale and she sent me the link. I bought them from this woman all the way in Seattle. I couldn't wait to get them. Well, first of all, they look bigger in the picture. I thought they were, you know, cereal spoons. <laughs> they turned out they were little um, demi toss spoons for tea, which is fine. But I got like 12 of them and I was like, I polished them. And I was like, oh, just to have a piece of history, you know, these spoons. And I thought, should I use these to eat with or should I just leave them to display? And, and now they're just in a bag of all the other Queen Mary stuff I, I, I collect. Um, so I haven't, but I thought, what if I started hanging on to these? And the problem with that kind of psychometry, and for those that don't know, psychometry is when you touch an item and you can you can pull information and energy and, and things like that. So fancy word for basically just touching stuff. Um, if I was to do that, there's really not a way to figure out, you know, when you do that kind of psychometry, you need validation. When I do it in readings, I have the reader sitting there that's able to validate the information. Right. If I was to touch a spoon or whatever, I'm not sure where I'm going to look because the, the manifest and the records for the Queen Mary and who who was on there and stuff is, is very tricky to find the history of stuff. I have come across hidden manifests, which, which did say some of the passengers and who got sick and who jumped overboard. But, um, and I've gotten names before when I've been there and just kind of written them down and then checked against the information I, and, and did, was able to validate things. But I think in that aspect, it would be frustrating because you'd have this great information and you have no way to check against it. Right. So one other thing regarding that. So you have such this connection with the ship from the moment you were there, it sounds like. Yeah. Do you feel that this could have been a past life experience for you and you feel like you're back home? I love that. And that is a good point because you know what? There's me in buildings. I don't know what it is, but I can drive by and go, somebody died there. Somebody hung themselves there. I don't know what it is. And it's always, maybe it was growing up in this old, old house back home in Denmark that, um, I just, I, I don't know what it is with me in buildings. I feel it. They're, their pain, I feel their their tiredness. I mean, I feel everything, and not just not the people that were in it. I connect right. to, to 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 certain places. Like I'll walk into some places, and I'm like, I, I I can't be here. I have to leave. I just don't like it. And then other places, yeah. I want to camp out and never leave. And and the Queen Mary is one of those few places. Like even when I went to the Stanley Hotel, I was like, eh, okay, been there, done that. Um, but the Queen Mary, and I hate the hold it has on me. <laughs> like, I, I don't hate it. But, I mean, it, it's profound why an old ship like that is just, it's it's home. Like, I even yeah. looked into moving in there, and it was like $3,000 a month to live there um, monthly. Because I was like, I'm, I'm going to, I actually ended up for my birthday in a really big, big suite that had two rooms that went across. And they it's so big that the mayor of Long Beach actually lived there for about five years. And oh, I got wow. that suite and I was like, well, so then I thought, oh, you can live here. So then I thought, let me call and see how much rent is if I moved into the Queen Mary. And it was like 3000 a month. And I was like, it's so small and Wi-Fi is shaky. And, you know, I'm like, okay, it's not <laughs> ideal. And I have too much yeah. stuff. And But, right. you know, I entertained the thought for a minute that this could be home. So... I mean, it is, it is, I don't know. It's just, it, it just does something to, for me. <laughs> so instead you'd rather stay in Florida, fight the cockroaches the size of pit bulls Flying and, <laughs> and the, uh, the hurricanes that are just so entertaining. <laughs> That's the only time action happens here. Like, oh good. We have to go out and buy a whole bunch of food. We're never going to eat. And then board up the windows. <laughs> nothing to happen 
and then it passes. <laughs> That's funny. So I have a question here from, um, well, I can't say his full name. He won't allow me to say it. Uh, one of our troops had emailed me, and he's kind of curious. Um, since we're talking about the Queen Mary, do you plan on ever doing an event on the Queen Mary and, you know, psychic reading, ghost hunt? Because um, he's all, he's actually says he's done in six months and he lives in California. Oh, so cool. he I got six months to get it together. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. There um, you go. Good question because um, I was there in December 2019 was the last time. Once again, I had to go um, to visit family of my husband's. And um, I'm like, I'm not leaving California without going to the Queen Mary. So I, I'm taking off to go there and stay by myself. And um, I was actually starting to work with them on some things. And then came freaking COVID. And then everything got scrapped. So, um yeah, but I, there there was um, talk of, of starting to do some things like that. And now things have, of course, shifted. So doing a ghost hunt or any sort of organized anything anywhere is kind of nullified. I mean, I'm right. open to doing it anywhere, you know, um, anybody, any castle, any place that wants to organize and put something together. I'm, I'm willing to go there and do an event like that. It doesn't just have to be limited to the Queen Mary. Um, All right. You know, I would love to. I've even tried to, to talk to some people in Tampa that had some haunted locations and say, hey, what do you feel about doing some, you know, organized thing like that it would be great. So we'll have to see. We'll, everything is dot, dot, dot at the moment, you know, just to, you know, I can't do anything right now. So. Right, yes. right. Well, so that would be you. very interesting. <laughs> I would actually, I would love to go on out there and check that place out. I think uh, my whole team, I know, would go crazy with it. Um, So, okay, now it's just docked. They don't take it out or anything like that, right? Yes, it has been docked since um, the maiden voyage was 1936. So um, 30 years later, I believe it was docked. So it has not moved. um, And and it's it's right there in the hubbub of Long Long Beach. Beach. So, Mm -hmm. yeah, you can even right below there, you can go and take the the Catalina Express to go to Catalina. So it's it's nice centrally located, you know, and then you can um, Uber or drive around and you're right there in downtown Long Beach. It's just a nice location. And um, I always try to get the um, the starboard side so that um, starboard so I can look out over the city lights over Long Beach. It's really remarkable. Um, well, I would think that during this COVID thing, they probably wouldn't allow so many people on that on the ship because you know it's more s- smaller, kind of yeah. like, enclosed more. I mean, it's big. Don't get me wrong, but it's just more enclosed. So I'm sure that they probably kind of downsized a lot, and because they have lots of events, lots of events. I know, way too. It's many great. For, for, I mean. I understand they want to try to recoup money because, you know, the pool is falling apart and they're trying right. to do reparation and things like that. However, it wasn't like that in 2010 when I first no. went. I was really mm-hmm. enjoying the ship. And, and even sometimes I would book a room and I'm like, oh, my God, there's a wedding. There was even a gay club one time. And I was like, what's all this noise? And there was all these gay guys in little outfits. And I'm like, <laughs> this is not a club. <laughs> right. <laughs> I'm like, what are you doing to my ship? Um, but they had so many different American Idol was on there. You know, they yep, had so many things. Were. And, I did, and I'm like, man, it's getting harder and harder to really plan when to go when the ship is quiet. And, and I don't exactly. have you know, So it's taken a lot from interacting with the ghosts because when it's that busy, they just shy away. Yeah, exactly. exactly. Interesting. Uh, Willow? Okay. Um <laughs> <laughs> You got me. Um, are we still talking to Queen Mary? Yay! No, you can go ahead and turn and make the subject something else. Um, no, I, I, I guess because I, I wanted more information from you on your perspective of past lives. Because I keep feeling for some reason that you might have been the captain of the Queen Mary at one point. Well, I must have changed sex then. I must have been the male. Oh, yeah. I, I couldn't have been a female captain. Oh, I'm let's maybe, call that progressive maybe. reincarnation. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Yeah. Um, I mean, there must be. And, and 
I know I got a little sidetracked because I get so excited about it. But you're right. I think that when you connect with something so deeply, it must be because of a past life. Because I mean, why? It's just a, a, a ship sitting there. But for some reason, it feels at home. I don't I don't get that with really any other place that I can think of so far. So there must be some sort of hidden, maybe a passenger, maybe I was a, a maid whatever I did on there that it just feels homey to me and you brought up a good point and I'll never look at it the same because <laughs> you know um it, it is it that could very well be I know that's why I'm in New Orleans because I feel like I've been here before this wow. is where I belong wow I'll come visit you sometime cool. <laughs> I gotta get up there. I gotta get I'm there. always open for that we'll find some haunted places <laughs> yes Yes. So curiosity, now that you had brought that up, that you belong there and stuff, it feels like you belong there. Do people tend to, in their lives, to um, move to places that their past life maybe were at before? You know what I mean? I think, well, expanding on what willow said with places um i think anytime people you know because some people they feel so familiar you meet a total stranger and i'm like i feel so comfortable with you mm -hmm. i think that's left over from a, that's another soul that's back again in a different body and that's why you it's so comfortable you know it's like i feel like i've known you forever you know when you meet that person you say that i think that's that person that you had something with previously friendship or whatever Maybe you're a sibling with the person, but but you're back again. So why wouldn't that roll out in places as well? Um, maybe the same reason people get the same car over and over again. Maybe there was some connection with that um, or the same type of dog. I think that 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 um, broken record sim syndrome starts over again. And then that's why we tend to go with what's comfortable, safe, familiar. Mm, interesting. So. Karen, um, in our chat room, had asked a question a while back, and I'm finally getting to it. Um, sorry, Karen. Uh, I'd like to hear more about her experiences with mediumship. Any kind of interesting cases that you can talk about? Plus also, um, it was thrown in there too, uh, she also has a TV show on Amazon, uh, according to her website. What's, uh, can you talk a little bit more about that also too? Okay, um, I'll go to that first since that, that's a little shorter and quicker. Um, I got approached a couple years ago from the producers of the show, and they're like, we want to build a show around you. Um, just people relaying their scary stories. So, well, it wasn't really so much about me being psychic and medium as it was just me sitting and listening to their stories and kind of breaking it apart and maybe giving my insight as to what I think happened. And then if they needed help, then I would be there, you know. But again, it wasn't really so much focused on my mediumship and my psychic abilities as it was just more about the people and, and um, them sharing their things. So that was that. Um, they just wanted to do a run. Um, the producers have gone on to other things because they're, they're very movers and shakers kind of thing. So... Um, that was it for that season. So I'm a free agent. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> anybody, no, I always get a, well, now it's slower, but every year new pilot season comes and people call me for, for shows and nothing ever happens. Like, you know how it is with Hollywood, but, um, yeah, so that was good that I, I got, I got to do something. Um, but I didn't really think it, it really showcased much of me other than being in the Oprah of the paranormal world. So, <laughs> Gotcha. Well, that and you were on Dumb and Dumber, which oh, man. Uh, <laughs> she's in a bikini, guys. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> no, I'm blushing. <laughs> um, yeah, so for the mediumship, the craziest, I don't know, I've had really crazy things happen. A funny one um, would be I had this one guy and, and I was channeling his mother and I always videotape my sessions. And he's like, can you just tell my mother to just lay off, stop hanging around me, just, I don't need her around anymore. And right as he said that, the camera shut off. <laughs> And I said, well, I guess you got your wish. <laughs> you pissed her off and she's done. <laughs> you want this video. <laughs> and 
I've never had that happen where the ghost or the, the spirit just like, that's it. We're done then. Right on cue, as he said, I just tell my mother to go away. And um, it was quite comical. I've had um, things fall out, um, light lights fall out of the ceiling. Um, sometimes it depends on how strong the spirit is. We had a smell of burning all of a sudden happen. And I had to stop the reading and run around and see if it was my incense or what was burning. And then the smell went away. And I said, did you smell? And even it was so strong this time that the client even smelled it. And she goes, oh, he's trying to tell me about this one time I almost burned the house down with this this piece of bread I had in the oven. So the spirit was actually able to manifest an entire smoke smell within my apartment. But it, the way I knew it was from the spirit eventually they manifest sense and they come in very quickly out of nowhere. And then within minutes they dissipate and there's no trace at all. And that's what makes it different from actually smelling smoke or, or some other smell. Human smells linger and this just went away. But for my client to smell it, you know that they had to be pretty strong to make that happen. Cause there's one thing if I can smell it, but so things like that, you know, I love doing the mediumship readings. I love the healing part of it. And when fun happens and crazy things, you know, it really adds to the, the whole thing. Right. So a few of the stories. I mean, there's, there's a lot that that's going to be in the book when it ever gets finished. Cause I have to finish the paranormal book first and then go on to the psychic one, which is going to have all the cases of uh, the most memorable ones, which are just like, Oh, like, Oh my God. <laughs> well, you know, it's funny is that, um, sorry, ladies, I know you guys are up next for questions. So this is just a, this isn't a question. This is, uh, the first time that I met you, uh, it was interesting is that you, um, uh, you needed you first, you needed a photo of me, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yes. And then she did the reading. She, and then she called me back. Uh, we, uh, were on Skype and she told me things that I've never told anybody else before, which just blew me away. Like I didn't have, I wasn't a favorite of anybody's. And she was talking directly with my mother, who died in 1976, and um, that I wasn't the favorite. And she kind of told who was the favorites and stuff. And also had mentioned, which is okay, you know, I I don't know, I cried for about three years after she told me that because oh it was a realization. But I'm okay, I'm okay. It doesn't, it's not damaged me none. But anyway, um, <laughs> then she also told me uh, about my brother who is the special one. He's mentally handicapped. Mm -hmm. And it's like, wow, you know, I mean, I didn't talk about none of this stuff. But the biggest thing after you and I got to be friends, I remember one time you had a selenite wand and you were, you had it on your Facebook. And so I messaged you and I said, uh, so the selenite wand, you know, that's good for doing clearings. Um, and you said, yeah. And I said, well, where can I get one? And you said, why do you need one? You have a big thing of tourmaline right next to your bed. Use that. It's <laughs> like, oh, my God. I couldn't believe it. I told Steph and Steph was like, holy stuff. <laughs> You know, because it was quite amazing that uh, she said, just use that. You know, you really don't need that. And you've never, you're in Florida. You were in California yeah. first when I first met you. Yeah. And then you were went to Florida and you have not yet been to Minnesota. So huh. that just completely blew me away. So within this, okay, I am going to ask a question. Sorry, ladies. Um, remote viewing, is that one of the big things that you can do during readings? Yeah. Um, so I always have to clarify this because there's a remote viewing CIA type of remote viewing where you're mm. actually locking into coordinates and you need another person to do it and they sit and you write it down. And um, I'm able to remotely view and I don't always know when I do it, um, but I've, I can walk into people's houses mentally and look around. Um, I've, I've described people's toilets before and like things in their house. Um, I, I, I don't really know when I do it. Sometimes I just kind of am here and I 
pop over <laughs> subconsciously somewhere else for a minute. Um, it's very useful. I, I do know when I do it when I'm working on missing persons and murder cases because I can actually take myself to that place mentally and look around I am through the eyes of, of the victim, sometimes through the eyes of the, the suspect. I can look around and get an idea more of the scene, what happened to the person. Um, isn't always the most pleasant, but uh, that is one of the things I'm able to do when I need to. It doesn't always work, so don't, you know, I've, I've had people try to ask me to find their missing pets and sometimes I can just see if they're alive or dead. I can't always get the, the location, but at least I can get as much as I can, enough descriptions that maybe other people can step in and find them. Gotcha. Kimberly, there's a question uh, by Karen in the uh, chat room. So can you can't control it or can you? Um. Okay, so as far as the, I can, I mean, mm -hmm. I can consciously make it happen. I, I didn't mean like, oh, it just happens randomly. Just sometimes when I'm trying to do it, it doesn't work. That's what I meant. I, I can always control it. It's just some, some days maybe the concentration is stronger than other days. Right. And so uh, I get the gist of locations. I, I've seen... I've seen other locations, so I know I'm able to do things. Right. It's just some days are stronger than others. Gotcha. Willow, there's a couple questions. Uh, the last two questions. Steve B's question, will you take that? I'm sorry. We're, we're down to only about the three minutes left. So. Okay. So um, Steve wants to know, um, well, he states he believes you can move through dimensions. How do you feel about that? Absolutely. Um, as as my mind gets more evolved and advanced, um, I, I over the last month, um, so I've, I've been able to do some weird things. I have, I have to speed it up here. So I've been able to do some weird things where I can actually. Like today, I I was not feeling well, so I put myself in the seat at Disneyland at the Pirates of the Caribbean ride. And I was able to transport myself over there. I smelled the wood. I felt the water splashing. And I'm like, holy cow, this could be useful for a lot of things if you're not having a good day right. to, to just, like, I stayed here and I kind of teleported myself over there. Um, so, again, with each new gift, I, I want to try to work and master it more. But this is just something new I've been able to do. So I'm still fiddling with it. Awesome. awesome. <laughs> now, Karen, Karen has asked... Uh, so do you have a theory about why you saw Jerry's stuff, me? Why I saw Jerry's stuff? Just, yeah, oh, see, oh, the tourmaline. Yeah, um, yeah I, I, because I think I just locked into Jerry and then what Jerry needed and what Jerry was missing. And then all those elements had to come together in order for me to formulate, hey, you don't, you know, you have, it, it's, it's complicated. <laughs> no, I, I hear you sometimes. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, I mean, so, so it was just more like a need. I quickly assessed energetically what you needed, why you needed it. Do you really need it? And I was able to formulate all of that. <laughs> That's how quick my mind works. It's all over the place. It's constantly calculating energies and things. And so I was able from that to deduce that, Hey, you don't need to, you don't need it. Gotcha. Um, uh, Kimberly, I guess we, well, first off, um, Valentina, what is your website? So if people want to get a hold of you and get a reading and everything. Yeah. yeah or if you want to ask questions as a chat, I mean, um, if I have the time, I'll always gladly answer the questions. It's psychic medium, Valentina, V A L E N T I N A. Hopefully you can spell psychic. Um, some people spell physics <laughs> and it's a little twisted around. Don't be dyslexic. Psychicmediumvalentina.com. Um, otherwise, do a search for me and I should pop up. I'm pretty Got easy. it. Excellent. All right. Um, I'm trying to get it in before we have to go. Here we go. Oops. Come. I did it. Yay. I screwed it up. I forgot the period oh. in there. <laughs> anyway. Well, thank you so much, Valentina, Mrs. V. 
It's Thank great you. having you on the show. Is it so good to see you? <laughs> you too. Do it again I've soon. <laughs> um, so thank you, Willow. Thank you, Kim. Uh, thanks the troops for listening and participating yes, in some I of the questions. Excellent. I want to say thank you and thank you for for all the service and everything that everyone does and everyone just stay safe. Exactly, and thank you, Para X and Sarge. Good night, everybody. Good night.